Hey, Year 11. Mrs. Bowen discussed with you the other day that E to the X is its own derivative. And she showed a really cool way of using Desmos and using sliders that when you graphed um, a number to the power of X, and then you found the derivative of that number using some notation on Desmos, and you used that slider, when you got to about that number 2.7-ish, that the curve, the original curve, and its derivative ended up being that same curve. It was its own derivative. Now, she also explained that that was the natural number E, and that Euler came up, well, he didn't come up with this natural number E, but he, he discovered it and, and, and used it to explain a whole range of different mathematical concepts with it. One thing Euler did with E was he used and found heaps of different ways of approximating it or or writing it out algebraically. So using one of his methods, I want to show you how using our differentiation methods, we can show that e to the power of x is its own derivative. So let's jump into that. Cool. All right, so e to the power of x. One way that Euler described e to the power of x is that it is 1 plus x over 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on until the end of time. You can go on forever writing that. And that's a really good approximation for the value of e. So I'm going to use this approximation to help show how the derivative of e to the power of x ends up being just e to the power of x. And to kind of help explain that, I'm going to go a bit of color coding here. So if I just drop this in here um, and remembering that we've got dot, 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 I'm going to use this color coding to help describe what's going on. So to start off with, let's get some of our notation. So if we want to find the derivative of e to the power of x, I'm going to say d on dx of e to the power of x is equal to and because this is all addition, I'm just going to, you know, find the derivative of each thing one step at a time. So, starting off with one, the derivative of a constant is just zero. So we have zero, and I'm going to plus with that, and now I need orange. So the derivative of x over one factorial, well, our denominator is just a constant. So I don't need to worry about that. I'm worrying about the x, the derivative of x is just one. So what we have is one over one factorial. The derivative of x squared over two factorial, well that just becomes two x over two factorial. So, so far we've got that, which is which is okay. Um, I'm just gonna tidy this this up a little bit. Well, zero stays zero. I'm just going to leave it at zero for the moment. Um, plus, 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 plus. Um, and then one over one factorial. Well, that's just one over one. Two uh, x over two factorial. I'm going to start to write this slightly different. I'm going to say, well, that's just two x over two times one factorial. Um, and just a side note, if we don't remember what factorial is, now exclamation mark, um, and I'll just do it over here on the side, um, five factorial is just, well, let's give myself a bit more room there. Uh, five factorial is just five times four times three times two times one, so that, that, that exclamation mark in mathematics just stands for factorial, and it just means starting at five, multiply by every single digit, or every single whole number, all the way back down towards the number one. All right, um, so I'm just gonna rewrite these all slightly differently. Um, one over one, or well, zero is still zero, one over one is one, 2x over 2 times 1 factorial, well, my 2s are going to cancel out. 3x squared over 3 times 2 factorial, my 3s are going to cancel out. 4s 
the fives, and we know that that pattern is going to continue. So if we were to write this out, well, zero is just zero, one over one is one, so I get one plus, I get x over one factorial, I get x squared over two factorial, I get x cubed over three factorial, I get x to the power four over four factorial, and that pattern will continue on. Now, I wonder if you've noticed this. This solution here is identical, identical to what we started off with, right? e to the x was 1 plus x over 1 factorial, x squared over 2 factorial, plus x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. And when we just did our differentiation there of each term, simplified our fractions, we got the exact same thing. We got that that equals e to the power of x. So e to the power of x, when we use an example for, for a way of expressing e to the power of x differently, and then we find its derivative. Algebraically, we also ended up with the answer e to the power of x. So there is an algebraic proof or, or reasoning why e to the power of x is its own derivative to go along with what Miss Bowen showed you about Desmos. Look, my year 12s and year 11s over the last few years have found that really interesting and pretty cool. Um, I hope you guys did. I think this is one of the absolute wonderful things about the number e. All right, guys. Catch you next time.